Let me ask you something real quick. Do you really know how your business ranks on Google Maps or are you just assuming based on your own search? Because I hate to break it to you, just because you see yourself at number one doesn't mean anyone else does. I used to ask every client three simple questions before running an audit. Number one, what keywords are you trying to rank for? Number two, who are your main competitors? And number three, where exactly are you trying to get found? Seems pretty straightforward, right? But here is what usually happens. About nine times out of 10, they'd get at least two of those wrong. The keywords, totally off. Usually stuff that doesn't even trigger a Google map pack in search results. Competitors, not even close. And the location, oh yeah, we serve all of Texas. Sure you do. And yet they proudly say, but when I search for myself, I'm number one. Yeah, from your office, on your phone, while logged into your Google account. And for what keyword anyway? What they didn't realize is that Google Maps rankings change depending on where the search is happening, sometimes even block by block. That's why I stopped asking those questions altogether. These days, I take a completely different approach. I pick the keywords I believe are the most relevant for the business, define a realistic target area based on the business's address, and from there, I can figure out who the real competitors are in different parts of town. And in today's video, I'm going to show you exactly, yes you, how to do the same, so you can spot where your business is showing up, where it's not, who you're up against, and how to start fixing it. To do that, you'll need a grid tracking tool. If you've been following me for a while, you probably already know what I'm talking about, but, just in case, here is a quick breakdown. A grid tracking tool shows you where your Google business profile ranks across a map, not just at your address, but in all the surrounding areas. It makes it super easy to see how visible you really are to potential customers and where you're basically invisible. It also shows you who's beating you and exactly where they're doing it. There are plenty of tools out there like Bright Local, Local Viking, and SEM Rush. They all have their strengths and weaknesses, but my go-to one is called Local Falcon. I've dropped a link in the description below if you want to check it out. But honestly, whichever tool you use, the concept is the same. What really matters is how you set it up for your business. More specifically, what keyword you track, the radius and grid size you choose, and most importantly, how to turn those colorful ranking grids into real world action that drives traffic and customers. So let me show you exactly how to do that. All right, let's talk keywords. What kind should you be actually tracking? This is where a lot of people totally miss the mark. They either go way too broad, like photography or portraits, which are super competitive and don't tell Google much about what you actually do or where you do it. Or worse, they pick something that doesn't even trigger a map pack in Google search. So your business profile won't show up no matter how great it is. So let's say you're a local photographer, maybe wedding, family, or branding photography. Here's the mix I recommend. Number one, branded keywords. This is just your business name, like Jesse Lynn Photography. You should absolutely be ranking number one for this. If you're not, something's broken with your profile and it needs fixing fast. Number two, non-branded discovery keywords. These are general service terms, what people are searching when they don't know your name yet. Think wedding photographer, family photo shoot, professional headshots, event photography. These help you get discovered by people looking for what you do, not who you are. Number three, high intent local keywords. These are the juicy ones. They often include your location or near me and they show buyer intent. Think wedding photographer, Chicago, headshot photographer near me, family photography studio in Austin. Pro tip. Once you've picked your keywords, plug them into Google and see what shows up. If a map pack appears, you're on the right track. That means Google sees it as a local search and your business profile can show for it. I recommend starting with five to 10 really solid keywords for each Google business profile you wanna track. That's the sweet spot. Enough to give you a clear view of how visible you actually are without drowning you in too much data or noise. Once you establish your list, you're ready to start tracking your listing for those keywords. Setting up your scan, radius and grid size explain. No matter which tool you're using, the first thing you'll need to do is import your Google business profile into it. If you're using Local Falcon, here is how to do it. Click on run quick scan, then hit search and type your business name into the field. Local Falcon should automatically pull up your listing. Just click add and make sure it's selected in the location dropdown. 
One quick heads up, if you're a service area business and don't have an address showing on your profile, the tool will place a pin where it thinks your business is located. So double check that pin placement. And if it's off, drag it to the correct spot to get the most accurate result. All right, next step, let's set things up. First, pick the map you want to track your results on. Local Falcon gives you a few options here, Google Maps, Apple Maps, and they just rolled out the new Google AI overviews as well. Pretty cool. But for now, let's keep things simple and stick with Google Maps. Then just add your list of keywords, the one we talked about earlier. Once that's in, you're ready to set up your radius and grid size. And this part is important because it really affects the accuracy of your scan. Let's start with the radius. So here is the deal. How big or small your radius should be depends massively on competition in your area. Here is a simple way to think about it. If you're in a busy city center like downtown LA or Chicago, keep it tight. Start with a one to three mile radius. There's loads of competition and rankings can change block by block. In suburban areas, you've got a little more breathing room. A five to 10 mile radius is usually a solid starting point. In rural areas, where things are spread out and there's not as much local competition, go bigger. You might start with 12 to 20 miles, especially if you're covering a wide service area. Now, keep in mind, this is just a general guide. There's no one size fits all. You'll probably tweak your radius over time as you improve your listing and start seeing better results. All right, next up, let's talk grid size. This is basically how many data points you'll have on your map. So imagine your service area as a grid like a chessboard. A 3x3 grid gives you just 9 points, while something like 15x15 15 15 gives you a whopping 225 points. Each point represents a specific location, and the tool runs a search from that spot using your chosen keyword, just like a customer would if they were standing right there. Pretty cool, right? Now, for your first scan, I'd recommend starting with a 7x7 7 7 or 9.9 .9 grid. That gives you plenty of detail to spot patterns without overwhelming you with a ton of numbers. But if you're in a dense city and you want to see how your rankings shift from one block to the next, you can go bigger. A 13 by 13 or even 15 by 15 grid will give you a super detailed picture. On the flip side, if you're in a quieter area with less competition, a 5 by 5 grid might be totally fine. Bottom line, don't be afraid to play around with it. Run a few scans with different grid sizes and see which one gives you the clearest insight into what's really going on with your rankings. You're not gonna break anything and you'll learn a ton in the process. Okay, you're all set. All you need to do now is run your scan. All right, once your scan is done, head over to the scan report section. It's in the menu on the left hand side. Find the report you just ran, then click on competitors. This is where things get really interesting. You'll see exactly who you're actually competing with, not who you think your competitors are, but the ones who are actually showing up ahead of you on Google Maps. Take a look. Is there one business that seems to dominate a bunch of those grid points? If so, click on their profile and have a snoop around. Ask yourself, are they using more business categories than I am? Do they have more or better reviews? Are they uploading more photos? Is their website more polished or locally relevant? Basically, what are they doing that you're not? Now, if your map is mostly green, congrats. That means you're ranking in the top three in a lot of areas, which usually means you're showing up in a map pack. And that's where the leads come from. Time to target additional keywords. But if you're seeing a bunch of orange or red, especially in neighborhoods you really care about, that's a sign you're being outranked. And that's where the opportunity is. The cool part you can click on any dot in your grid and see exactly which businesses are ranking there. Then dig into their listings too. Yep, time to do a little friendly competitive spying. And if all this feels a bit overwhelming, Local Falcon actually has an AI report analysis feature you can use. It will break down the scan and give you clear, actionable tips on what you can do to improve, whether it's tweaking your categories, adding content, or fixing something technical. 
It's super handy, especially if you're not sure where to start or what to tackle first. All right, so what I've just shown you is really just the tip of the iceberg. There's a lot more you can do with this tool. The main idea here is simple. Optimize your Google business profile, then run the same scan once or twice a month to track your progress. If you're seeing improvements, great, keep going. If not, that's your cue to tweak your strategy and try something new. This is hands down the best way to really understand how well your listing is performing and more importantly, how to make it better. Speaking of improvement, once you run your first scan, do yourself a favor and watch this video next. In that one, I'll show you exactly how to turn your Google business profile into a lead generating machine. I'll catch you up there.